Hi, I'm Chris Little with KFI AM640. I'm the news director here at KFI. And today we're talking with Gabriela Robles. She's the vice president of community partnerships with Providence St. Joseph Health. And Sandra Vieira, she's the associate program director for Prevention Institute's National and California Prevention and Equity Teams. Long title, but it's good to have you both here. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Gabrielle, I think we'll start with you. Why don't you just uh, tell us what you do at Providence St. Joseph Health? Great, well thank you. So I oversee the Community Partnership Fund. Um, it is a grant making entity. It was created 32 years ago. And the intent is to invest uh, in the communities that we serve through our hospitals. So we want to engage in the community outside of the hospital walls and really partner with our residents, with our nonprofit organizations, and other like-minded partners. So we've been doing this for about 32 years, investing dollars and investing technical assistance and participation in efforts throughout the state of California. And why did Providence get into this, and you know, Providence St. Joseph Health get into this you know, outside of the clinical arena? Because we understand that really health is where you live, where you play, where you work. And we want to be with the community to understand how best to serve the community within the hospital and in the community. And we also want to work with organizations that serve the, um, the economically poor and really understand how best to serve the community. And can you tell me about the uh, Intersection Initiative? Well, I could. Uh, what I want to share with you first is the Intersections Initiative is fairly new. Uh, we've been evolving as a fund. We've been investing in, maybe in the beginning was more service type programs like education programs, health education, for example. And we realized after meeting with residents and talking to organizations and thought partners throughout the state that we needed to understand the root causes of some of these issues. You know, why is it that our children have diabetes type 2 when they're little? Why is it that we have so much gun, gun violence in our communities? Mm -hmm. Why are we dealing with so many mental health issues? So while those are addressed at the, in the clinical setting, we needed to look at the root causes. And so the Intersections Initiative came into place. Uh, it's been in place for two years now. And so how do you look at those root causes? Mm -hmm. So we have to think about, it's an issue, for example, mental health, right. that cannot be resolved only in the hospital setting. And I know Providence St. Joseph Health is really big in mental health. Yes, it's one of our biggest concerns, focus areas. Mm -hmm. How do we engage our local politicians, our local government, our nonprofit, other hospital systems? bring them to the table, and how do we address this with the community, those who are directly impacted by the issue, at the table, and how do we define the role of the hospital to be at the table as a facilitator of this work? And that's why we partner with Prevention Institute, where they have a lot of experience throughout the country in this type of work. And uh, that is where uh, Sandra is, uh, she's with Prevention Institute. Tell us what you do there. Sure, Chris. Um, I am an associate director with Prevention Institute. We're a national nonprofit. We work nationally, but our home base is in California, both in Northern California and Southern California. We've had now, we have now about 21 years of experience working with different communities, inclusive of community residents, local elected officials, health departments, health systems, to think about how we address these complex health issues. Mm -hmm. So as Gabriella was talking, you know, there's a number of different pressing and urgent health issues that our communities are facing. And we see them manifested in high rates of, um, you know, type two diabetes or asthma, or as we were talking about, incidences of mental health or poor mental health. And what we're not doing, I think, as a society, as community as systems, is understanding what's at the root of those issues. If we're continuously seeing um, more people, younger people, coming to the hospitals um, with these illnesses and injuries, what could we be doing outside of the hospital to prevent them from coming in in the first place? So Prevention Institute works on developing tools and frameworks and facilitating initiatives like this one to garner the wisdom of those communities and to bring together those different agencies and think about the problems and the solutions comprehensively and holistically. Okay, and Sandra, uh, I just want to make sure that I caught this. Your role at the Prevention Institute is 
I am the director of the Intersections Initiative for Prevention Institute. Okay. So I help to bring a, a team of folks who are have a lot of experience and expertise around building partnerships and then some of these topical issues. So one of the things, like I think housing has come a lot, has come sure. up a lot in our conversation. So how do we do healthy development without displacement? So we bring together some of the topical or content expertise with some of the things that are needed to make any of this happen. Community engagement, communications, mm -hmm. um, strategy development. So our role is to um, support and inform the fund um, as well as work directly with each of the seven communities. So my role is to kind of help design that and to be directly involved with a lot of these groups. Well, do you have the answers? Do you have the why there's type 2 diabetes and asthma? Do you know the reasons? We have a lot of information and a lot of context and evidence coming both from health departments and health systems. Um, the so what do you CDC. do with it? What do you do with that information? What we do is we bring that um, quantitative data and we bring it with the lived experience of community members who are saying, I am not only dealing with type 2 diabetes, but I'm also dealing with asthma and I'm trying to raise my family and my kids amongst that. And we braid those things together to think about how they relate and what we can do about them. So there can be connections between type 2 diabetes and asthma because if we are seeing that housing costs are really high and so, you know, a single or a dual income family, they're not, they don't have enough funds to afford quality housing, that means there's less money for healthy foods, or maybe it's substandard housing. So they're paying a lot of money for substandard housing that is then, you know, creating issues around air quality, et cetera. So what we try to do is work with those members, with those organizations to understand what are the systems that are involved in those things and how do we change them so that we can in, in fact change the health outcomes. So we're talking about changing the system as opposed to giving information to the people. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot longer. You know, we have a very supportive board. Uh, we are, you know, very focused on clinical and meeting with our board and talking about we want to do this type of work because we we understand that that is what we need to do as a fund in responding to the need and and really looking at it in the longer term and i'm very proud to say our board said this is something we need to do and we encourage you and support you so we've been working on this for about two years and developing the initiative mm -hmm. and identifying what are some realistic outcomes that we can see over the next couple of years with this work. And uh, Providence St. Joseph Health has been really innovative in all of these issues and in many other issues, and you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, health care, yeah. mental health, um, I'm, I'm speaking of mental health care. Mm. Um, how is it that you continue to evolve and continue to be innovative? You know, the philosophy that we have at Providence St. Joseph Health is that we are in the community to really understand the needs and the assets and not assume we know everything. And that is why I'm there because my team and I, most of us have uh, many years of experience working for the nonprofits and right. all of us are children of immigrant parents. So we understand those struggles. And now we're in a position where we can work in an organization that encourages and supports that innovation and thinking outside the box mm -hmm. to really help create healthy communities. And the communities uh, that you have selected for this program are all the way from Northern California in through mm -hmm. Southern California, Humboldt right? County, High Desert, yeah. Orange County, Napa, and Sonoma. How'd you select them? So currently that is where we have hospitals. So oh, we, okay. en we engage in the communities where our hospitals are present, where our employees live, and where our communities live. And what sort of challenges have you had? I'm assuming you've had a couple. <laughs> You know, internally, it's really helping our leadership understand that it's a little different in how we do this work, mm -hmm. but we see a lot of promising practices in this space, and we have a lot of support. I know Sandra's been very involved with the local communities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is a different way of working and of thinking, and success looks differently. I think one of the things that health systems are sometimes challenged with and limited by is that success is measured maybe by number of individuals served or right. 
programs that are done. Mm -hmm. And that is a really good indicator of how we are treating and supporting people and communities that are already sick or unwell, but it's not measuring how we're preventing those things in the first place. And what I think mm -hmm. is really valuable about what the Community Partnership Fund does is to think about what success looks like if we're bringing together people from different sectors, from different systems, with different experiences, to redesign it together. Right. And the innovative part is just saying, we're gonna better understand what the success looks like you know, in the next few years, and we're going to follow what the communities are telling us to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, because Prevention Institute gets to work nationally and get to see different things played out, one of the things that I think has stood out to us about the initiative, but also what the fund does, is its reliance and its focus on community leadership and having not only community residents, but the community-based organizations that have been there for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, who have ridden the ups and downs of whether it's the economy or what popular culture, or really what even the evidence tells us, right? Because you can look to articles. This is the one thing that will solve a public health crisis. It's mm -hmm. never one thing. And that's what the Intersections Initiative is looking at. It's not one thing. It's braiding these things together and looking at them as a bigger puzzle piece. And that's yeah. different. So it's about, it's about trying to keep everyone healthy as opposed to trying to get patients. And the opportunity with Providence St. Joseph Health is we have so many relationships. We've been right. engaging with our investments, our community benefit work, the work of the fund for so many years that people are coming to the table and they understand it's a challenge. It's a real challenging um, request that we're making them think about and engage in. Come to the table, help us figure out how to solve this issue together. So they're excited about coming to the table. They're you excited. don't have to pull them. They trust us, and we have that relationship. And you built that relationship. Right, over the years. I think there's been other initiatives that the fund has mm -hmm. seeded and cultivated. That means that now you have leaders within hospitals. So in those mm -hmm. seven partnerships, you have hospitals who are anchored in their communities and who have you know, been supported by the fund and who really see the value of what does it mean to invest in partnerships and we take partnerships for granted right mm -hmm. at any day we could say I'm gonna partner with this person or this group but partnership when it's real and it's sustainable and it's effective is not only about agreeing on what we all can agree on mm -hmm. but actually talking about the things that we might have different ideas around mm -hmm. and I think you were asking around you know what have been some challenges and I think one of the ones that we've learned in the last year or so is that organizations and systems talk to each other, but they don't always get kind of to the to the harder parts, to the sticky parts of a conversation. So things are the way they are because we've kept moving them, right, forward without actually coming to mm -hmm. the parts where it's sort of like we don't agree on certain things, right? Um, and that's a level of discussion and dialogue that I think hasn't, there hasn't always been a lot of room for mm -hmm. in these different types of initiatives or for a health system to lead them and say, we're gonna think about our hospital, but we're also gonna think about the community and mm -hmm. what's outside of these. So what would you walls. give the program if you had to grade it? So this is year two, implementation year one. Year one, we're yeah. like 10 days into the, uh, to the initiative. Oh, so so a, you're right? a year you and 10 days a? old maybe <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. So we, we invested uh, significant dollars in the planning year mm -hmm. because we understand it takes a lot sure. to bring people together. This is the first year for implementation. We Have just you seen met. the results you were looking for? Well, we just met in Oakland a couple of months ago, a month yeah. ago in November. Convening, yeah. yeah, we did. And the impacts that we've seen so far is um, they are gelling as a collaborative. Uh, they're, they're looking at their data. They're understanding what data is missing. They're identifying different ways of approaching the issue. To us, that's success. Sure. Because they don't, they're not coming and saying, we already solved it. We don't expect that. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were very honest about their struggles, mm -hmm. right? And about how they're trying to do this work. Mm -hmm. What other issues do you find? I think what's really interesting when you think about a health system or even think about groups that are primarily focused on health is the things that they have identified and raised as what they'll be working on and focusing on are things that we don't necessarily immediately connect with health, but we know they, they are in fact connected. Housing, economic development, um, parks and open space, food systems, and they're talking about them together so mm -hmm. that it doesn't feel siloed. So if we're thinking about, well, how do we support people in being healthy around chronic disease? 
Well, it starts with food, but it doesn't end there, right? Because we have to think about the transportation systems that mm-hmm. surround them. We have to think about housing, to think about the quality of our schools. So to see mm-hmm. partnerships grappling with those really, really big cool. things, I think is success. It's very successful. It's been a learning process. You've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Have you learned anything that you weren't expecting to learn? So I'm an optimistic person. Uh, it's it's taken a little longer um, for the gelling to happen, but we're asking them to work differently. As a funder, um, we give money and they do a project and we get a report. We're saying we'll give you money, but you need to be at the table and you need to struggle with this issue with us together. And there's no right answer at this time. So wow. it's an ongoing conversation. And I think encouraging them to identify and face their challenges Mm -hmm. because if I think if we say continue to do what you're doing or only play nice we're not going to do anything different Mm -hmm. we're going to continue the same and one of the things that we've learned is in the communities where during their planning process they kind of had some lively debate or discussion or some combustion of ideas they've managed to turn the corner and to actually connect more and relate to each other more as mm-hmm. organizations and people and to come in it as a partnership versus a set of organizations or partners that are at the same table and yeah. that's been really different would you say you're partners. disrupting the system then we, we're disrupting the system yeah i think so i think, we're I think we are it. and the, that's exciting it's exciting and you know once our investment in, ends those relationships will continue and they will continue to work and we will be there as a partner mm-hmm. and that's what i'm looking forward to they, they're going through some struggles right now sure but that's what we need to do to get at the root cause of these issues well those struggles were probably expected yeah. i would say have there been any light bulb moments like oh my gosh the light bulb moments um i think they ha- we've affirmed a lot of things, even mm. in sort of And that's this, important. It's great, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's because giving us a sense of what we need to do, not only as individual communities or with the support of the fund or Prevention Institute, is there's a lot of things that need to happen at a state level mm-hmm. or at a regional level. Right. Housing is something that continuously comes up. And there's ways that it manifests and it happens locally, but it's a bit of a statewide issue. It's a federal issue mm-hmm. if we get to that. How can you help? How do we help? I think we have to think about the different mechanisms Mm -hmm. and the different ways that we can change policy. Policy is really what is going to move the needle, be the tipping point. It's going to be the thing that changes norms around health and well-being. So if we think about um, redevelopment or development with affordable housing in mind, with mixed-use development, then we are investing in health and prevention. 20 years down the line. Mm -hmm. So I think what we're trying to do is get Mm -hmm. communities and people and stakeholders um, together to think about what are the different policies and organizational practices that can be enacted to support health in the long term. And in addition, I think being Providence St. Joseph Health as a partner, we can tap into our advocacy efforts that we have in place. We are anchor institutions. Wherever we are located, we are the largest employer. So how do we influence some of those policies and advocate for that as well? Has your focus changed at all over the past year and 10 days? With the initiative or? Uh You know, I think the initiative is informing the fund more about thinking a little bit more outside the box. The challenge now is how do we bring those learnings internally Mm -hmm. into Providence St. Joseph Health within the clinical space? So it's ongoing. Well, you seem really excited about all this, and um, what's next for the Prevention Institute in 2019, this year? In 2019, well, we're really excited to partner with the fund and with Providence St. Joseph. I think, you know, they're leaders in this, and they are really kind of setting the pace and the tone for what health systems have to do and where they need to be Mm -hmm. outside of the clinic walls. So our goal and our intent is to support the fund and support these seven communities. Um, I think there's a lot of interest and and eyes on them, and um, we want to be able to celebrate their successes, but also surface some of their challenges, because their challenges are our challenges and things that other communities can learn from. So we're excited to continue to connect with them, Mm -hmm. to identify, you know, the short-term wins, um, and to redefine sort of how this type of work happens for California, but also nationally. Mm -hmm. Is there a 
biggest challenge for you? I mean, what, what, what is, is there anything that is seemingly unsurmountable? You know, I think some of the things that feel challenging for us and for the communities is that it's a bit of a challenging and tough time for social justice, for equity, for prevention. There's a lot of um, energy and momentum and need to protect the things that are being taken away from communities. Mm -hmm. so if you think about communities across the state, but in particular the high desert or Orange County, there's communities who um, are scared right now about coming out and being part of community, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of being part of town halls or forums or participating um, because there's some real immigration mm -hmm. and uh, threats around that. So I think that's a big piece of it. If we think about some of the climate related disasters that affected Napa and Sonoma that devastated their housing stock. They are now challenged by a need to rebuild, but not to rebuild and exacerbate the issues that were already in place, mm -hmm. a lack of affordable housing, quality housing, and be able to meet the development needs with the health and the equity needs. So I think we're really facing at this point some of these larger justice issues. It seems like a lot of the solutions we're looking for are going to take a lot of advocacy. So do you do a lot of advocating, uh, I mean, you know, politically, or how, how does that work? So we work with organizations, some of these nonprofit organizations. As you were saying earlier, that yeah, they, okay. they do, that is part of their, their focus, is to do advocacy. And then internally we, we work with our advocacy department mm -hmm. to also help um, support some of these policies. Seems like Providence St. Joseph has all the bases covered. We're, we're definitely committed and yeah. we're very mission driven and that's why we're here. That's amazing. Um, Gabriella, what's next for the Providence St. Joseph on the health side? So we are now looking also at affordable housing. Affordable housing is an issue that's impacting all the communities we serve. Now what do you mean you're looking states. at it? We are discussing the issue with different partners in the, in the communities about how do we best serve and what will be our role in addressing that issue in the near future. How to address it, okay. And um, how are you gonna grow the program, both of you? For the Intersections Initiative? Either one. So, lessons learned, right? This is first year implementation, and then hopefully we can then start introducing the initiative outside of California. I read about um, breaking down barriers between sectors. Yes. What are they, and how do you break them down? Those are really good questions. Mm -hmm. I think that the barriers that exist between sectors include sometimes at the root um, funding streams right so if you think about where housing and transportation come from whether it's local or regional state or federal they come from different homes and so once that begins and then you begin kind of a you institutionalize those things. So if you are the Department of Transportation, federally or locally, you think about transportation and transportation only. Right. Um, it's in your mandate, it's how you're funded, it's what your expertise is in. And what we are trying to do is to think about how some of these organizations and agencies can talk amongst themselves and plan and strategize together. So how do housing groups and transportation groups or parks and open space how do they really think about their shared outcomes and strategies and come together? So I think part of our solutions have to do with bringing folks together and facilitating the discussions that don't happen naturally or organically. Um, what factors uh, support or uh, undermine health equity? And I, you know, before I started talking with mm -hmm. you guys uh, a few months ago, I didn't really understand what health equity meant, but now I hear it a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I understand it can be undermined and it can be supported. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? I think what we have found as a field is that um, both the academic literature, what our community experience has been, is that there are social determinants of health or community determinants of health. There are things and factors in communities mm -hmm that either prohibit or hinder health. So if you think about if people feel connected to each other, if they yeah. consider themselves neighbors, that's actually a determinant of health. And if you couple that with people's ability and opportunity to feel safe or to have food or products that are healthy available and available to them, that all of those things kind of connect together. So 
achieving or getting to health equity is about ensuring that all communities, but particularly communities that have been disadvantaged historically, uh, have all of the factors they need to be healthy, that they have healthy homes, that they have transportation systems that gets mm -hmm. them to where they need to go, that have quality schools um, and have living wages. So all of those things really contribute to individual health, but community health. Overall. And I'm not being cliche, but it seems like a lofty goal. But their goals, everyone I've talked to has the uh, passion and the dedication, it appears, to get this stuff done. We have to get it done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what other kind of programs uh, is the, uh, d does the fund um, take care of? So we have a number of initiatives. Um, another one that's pretty current is the sustainability initiative. It's working with our nonprofit organizations in helping to make sure that they have um, support to do their work. And so in a lot of our communities, it's the nonprofit sector that's at the forefront of responding to issues of concern. We realize that the fund is that we need to support them. Uh, we provide funding for technical assistance around marketing plans, business plans, succession planning. We've got a lot of executive directors that are at the last stages of their careers. How do they prepare the next generation to lead these organizations? We also have a disaster relief fund. Uh, we respond to disasters in a very different way. Uh, depending on the magnitude of the disaster, uh, we try to be there after the media leaves. So the example of Napa and Sonoma, we're currently engaging with nonprofit organizations and residents to think about how do we rebuild these communities, making sure that there's affordable housing, equitable housing in these communities? And that is the kind of work that we try to do. Uh, we also have a lot of work uh, around uh, our clinics as well, community clinics, and our emergency food and shelter. So that's more responsive. How do we make sure that our communities have access to affordable food, free food, assistance with housing, rent, uh, utilities so if you think of the spectrum it's looking at immediate needs through the emergency food and shelter looking at how to help the sector be able to better serve the community and now with the intersections initiative how to best approach the systems and how to bring different sectors to the table to address these issues is it all working the way you want it to work it's messy and it is this is the way yeah. it's supposed to work i think uh what's great is we are very aware of how we're evolving as a fund. We're a major funder here in California right now. And we're bringing other funders with us. We're bringing other, like the California Endowment, uh, to the What does that table. mean, you're bringing other funders So with how you? do we leverage dollars? How do we leverage dollars? How do we help inform the development of new initiatives at the California Endowment, for example, which is the largest foundation in California? Mm -hmm can continue to support in the communities. So we're in the middle of a lot of conversations. Um, there's never an, an end to anything. We just continue to grow, learn, and continue to engage in the community. So it seems like your momentum is picking up, continuing. What is it doing? That's what it is. I continuing mean, we, and picking up. Continuing, beginning. It's a, there's a beginning. Uh, there's a, an involvement and engagement. Uh, there's never an end. It, it just morphs into something else. That's how we see our work. And it's because we serve on boards, we're in the community, we understand the issues. It's never ending. And we have the support of Providence St. Joseph Health to fund this work, sure. which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that we've missed, that I've missed, that you'd like to mention, either one of you? Um, the only thing is, we've done research, the fund is the only model across the country that does this kind of work in Catholic health care. And we're also learning how we can best share these practices across the country uh, because we've got a lot of lessons to share and we are working in in an environment with a lot of tensions and challenges sure and we also want to balance that with all the good work that is taking place in the communities so are there a lot of open arms out there for you there's a lot of um, surprises about Providence St. Joseph Health is engaged in that type of work mm -hmm. and so that's encouraging and it's exciting so you've been doing a lot of work in the background that people haven't even really understood or known about. Right. Uh, we don't tend to use our dollars to market the work of the fund mm -hmm. because those dollars go in the community. Uh, but the Intersections Initiative would not happen if we didn't have those relationships and those partnerships. Mm -hmm. So I think 
the more we tell the story, the more there's an understanding of what the fund is and what the work and commitment of Providence St. Joseph Health is now and in the future. Okay. And Sandra, anything? Well, I mean, I would just say that I think that, um, you know, Gabriela and the fund, you know, have been very humble and modest about, you know, what they've done and their impact in communities because we get to see, you know, different initiatives and different philanthropies out there doing trying to do this type of work. And I think what they have done over their 30 plus years is invest in communities and people and organizations and meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. And some folks really need the urgent pressing programs and education and others are really ready and able and wanting to step into advocacy, to step into policy, to step into systems change. And as you were saying, those are challenging things. They're not easy, they're not straightforward, and you can't encapsulate them with a sure. beginning or an end. Mm -hmm. And I think that the fund has been um, open and able to support organizations and, and people there. So I think that's really important. I think there's a story there too about mm -hmm. all of these different uh, communities and what they've what they've done and I think you know what they're doing and I think we'll we'll be back really to okay. share yeah. all their successes but I think um, we're seeing a, a paradigm shift and we're seeing a shift in how we revolutionize and transform community health that's interesting paradigm shift so that that's very powerful so that is happening and people and sometimes a paradigm shift requires people to get on board whether they want to or not yeah. and if you are the ones who are uh, maybe causing this paradigm shift, that's, that's, that's really important. And you mentioned um, uh, they are humble, and um, mm -hmm. I've, I've noticed over the, uh, over the months that I've been talking with people from Providence St. Joseph Health, uh, uh, you know, they've got a lot of humility, but the work you guys are doing is really amazing. It's amazed me. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you know, it's fascinating, and the, the relationship between, um, you know, you two and uh, everything you're doing is uh, truly inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. Well, uh, Sandra Vieira and Gabriela Robles, thank you for joining us and uh, continued success to you both. Thank you. And thank you. We'll see you next time.